Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Larry Ukali Johnson Red. And we're going to be discussing his amazing book, Letter to My Young Brothers and Their Parents. That's available for purchase through Amazon, barnesandnoble.com. But people, if you want to gather everything that Larry has in store, do yourself a favor and check him out on Facebook, okay? Head on over to facebook.com and just simply type his name, Larry Ukali Johnson Red. And that's Red with two Ds. Search that. It's going to bring you directly to his page. And not only are you going to learn about what he has going on pertaining to this book, but people get this. Larry has been putting in some work because this is his seventh book that he's written. That's right. That's not a typo. This man has six other books that you're going to want to pick up through Amazon, as I stated, and Barnes & Noble as well. So head on over to Facebook, search his name, and gather everything that he has in store. And before we go any further, I do want to quickly take this opportunity and point out that Larry was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by one of the best advertisers in the business. And of course, I'm talking about Authors Press. So listen, if you're a writer out there, you have a book that you've written and you need help moving it, I'm going to give you some fantastic advice. Contact Authors Press. I'm telling you, they're one in the best in the business to do it. And this is what they specialize in. So head on over to AuthorsPress.com today and gather all the ways that they can help you advance your creative endeavors. And listen, it is a true pleasure, okay? An absolute delight to have Larry here on the line. The moment you start to do research on his book, you understand the discussion we're getting ready to have, okay? And and I'm just going to point out that, listen, people, (laughs) we're going to scratch the surface here today. We're going to capture the essence. But you're going to need to head on over to Amazon and Barnes & Noble and purchase your copies because there's going to be so much wisdom left on those pages that we just couldn't possibly get to. But this is a celebration of black excellence. I mean, this is an educational narrative, a a motivational and inspirational narrative. I mean, it really, in, in Larry's words, it was written in response to the negative scholastic achievements of young black youth in this country. Now, there are a lot of factors behind it, and especially if you come from a marginalized community, you know what we're talking about when we say that. And I personally, listen, I was I was blessed to to come from the family that I come from. My parents were were amazing at really keeping myself and my brothers on the right track and always stressing the importance of school and education. But I know given the community that I come from, a lot of my friends didn't have that same backing. And a lot of people that I know that really are some of the closest friends that I will continue to have until my last days didn't make some of the same decisions that I had when it came to education, when it came to some of their life decisions. And I love the fact that Larry has taken it upon himself to write a book of this magnitude because I'm telling you, this is an absolute necessity. This is something that you're going to want to have on your shelf because it's a wonderful resource and it's going to be an even better gift for you to get for someone else to put on theirs. I'm telling you, don't take my word for it. All right, take Larry's. He's written the book. He's done the research. He's going to be able to articulate everything much better than I ever could. So this is what I want you to do sit back, strap in, and have your notebooks ready, because Larry's about to take us back to the classroom. Larry, first and foremost, man, welcome to People of Distinction, and thank you very much for being a guest. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. It's my pleasure to be here with you, and thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. Listen, the pleasure is all ours. Larry, I meant what I said in my opening. I think what you're doing here is profound. I think what you're doing here is special, man. There's really no other way to categorize it. So this is a true honor um, and we're something that we're really looking forward to in terms of what we're going to be able to pick up with this short discussion and especially the wisdom we're going to be able to pick up once we start reading those words on those pages. 
Now, before we jump into the book, I do think it's important to learn a little bit more about yourself and your background. So let's let's start there. Larry, who is Larry Ukali Johnson Red? Tell us about yourself. Okay. First of all, I'm a, I'm a teacher. Um, uh, right now, I'm teaching adult school, uh, high school diploma uh, program. Uh, but I have taught in elementary. I've been a principal at uh, Liberty High School in Brentwood, California, uh, and also at the Job Corps uh, was a principal. So I'm a long-term educator, and also I'm a writer. And I traveled to Nigeria as a, my first teaching assignment. Um, with my late Nigerian wife, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and after coming back from Nigeria, I uh, wrote the book Loving Black Women because hip hop was kind of being disrespectful. And so I had to give that respectful uh, view. And uh, also, I have a book called History to Destiny um, A Journey to the Motherland, as well as I have a book on the Obama presidency, um, term one. Uh, it's called uh, American Challenges in the Obama Era One, and uh, the term two so it was uh, American Challenges in the Obama Era Part Two. And so, mm. I also wrote a book called Long Distance Love, and I'm sure you don't want none of that, but you can read about <laughs> my experiences having a long distance love in Nigeria and how it blew up in my face. But it's all good. Yeah, well, listen, life is filled with experiences, right? I'm, I'm here for it, man. I'm telling people, could we have selected a more perfect embodiment of a person of distinction to be on our network? As I mentioned when we first began, his book, Letter to My Young Brothers and Their Parents, is a celebration of black excellence and what we need to do to maintain it. But just listen to the titles without even going into descriptions of his other books. You just listen to the titles and you understand that that is a, a theme that carries throughout all of his books is just that that pride, right? And I love that, man. I love sure. to see it. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Larry, without further ado, tell us about your book, Letter to My Young Brothers and Their Parents. Okay, and the first chapter, again, starts out with elementary school and for black boys in elementary school because uh, so much happens in elementary school and sometimes uh, students are illegally moved uh, to a special ed class without an IEP, and it even happened to me. So I'm I'm talking about those kind of things in elementary school. And from the first day of school, the graduation should be um, emphasized as the the top of the learning curve. So in other words, you got to graduate, young man. So you need to go in and and cooperate with the teacher and do all the work. Uh, turn in your assignments on time, attend 95% of the time at least, and um, learn all you can uh, from the curriculum as well as, you know, from reading other books when you get home, especially black history books. That should be the home reading. And again, you have to make that difference because we know our students have to go through um, a, a white system. But also, we need to teach them how to read from the many black books that are being produced now by so many black writers. And so uh, elementary school is important because from the day one, the goal must be to graduate and also to learn everything you can so that you can say what you want to say and, and stand up for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that's uh, chapter one. Chapter two is for middle school. And middle school students have different challenges. However, um, they need to learn all the words and definitions like elementary school of their grade level. And these are um, lists that are on Google and other services. And you need to learn the words and definitions, especially in junior high school. Um, you also you must learn the sight words uh, for junior high. And you learn to write a three paragraph essay with the introduction. Um, and details will go in the body paragraph. And then finally, a conclusion that wraps everything up in the, in the essay. And so uh, in this book, I've given uh, students an assignment to write about the Etruscans. Who are the Etruscans? Well, the Etruscans were people from North Africa who traveled up, through, up, through, up into Italy uh, to Etruscan, um, and, and they helped build the First Vatican. So in other words, these, uh, you know, this will be a good three-paragraph essay for 
a young person in middle school to write. And again, I uh, practice writing three paragraph essays on the Etruscans uh, who came into or who in, invaded Rome from North Africa and learn how to express yourself and complete all of your sentences. And uh, that's a very important part of learning. Um, you also need to know the words and definitions of math and science uh, while preparing to graduate in middle school. So you write better to express yourself better and you check yourself in terms of the bad behavior, you check yourself, and attendance must be um, at least 90% because if you're not there every day, it's kind of be hard for you to keep up with the learning in the class. Yeah. And so these are the kind of things the young boys need to know, um, especially when they have an experience say, hey man, let's, let's, let's uh, quit today or let's uh, cut today and go over here and go over there. Uh, then we have chapter three, which is high school where you have to grow up and make friendships. However, you have to focus on graduation and receiving your high school diploma. Uh, graduation uh, must be your focus. In other words, uh, in high school, you learn to write a five paragraph essay, not three. And, and, and it's very important that you write a five paragraph essay that has five sentences that explain what you think, you know, profoundly. And it's, uh, you attend every class again in high school you complete all your homework, you avoid cutting classes, 100% attendance rate, or, you know, up that way, uh, guarantee success. Uh, you turn into uh, learning awareness. And so as you uh, enter high school, you try to maintain a 95% or better attendance rate. You write a five-paragraph essay, you know, uh, repeatedly. Now, in the book, you get an um, opportunity to write a five-paragraph essay where you would describe three things, um, and those would be the body of the paragraph. The body would be um, how am I gonna graduate from ninth and 10th grade? Second part being uh, how the second paragraph, uh, second body paragraph be how would I graduate from uh, middle school? And then the third one being how would I graduate from high school? Or in, in terms of the high school, how would I graduate from 11th grade and how would I graduate from 12th grade? You write an essay on that five paragraphs, and you mention all of the areas that you uh, have a temptation. Uh, you be able to set your goals high and achieve your goals when you get in high school. And so, again, this that's the third chapter, and then you have a fourth chapter, and it places it has a discussion about um, how people deal with high school if they feel like dropping out. Um, as an adult ed teacher, I will tell you, even before you come to school uh, to get your high school diploma after 18, you have to feed your family and go to work and then come back in when you're tired. So I know it's going to be a challenge, and so it'll be much easier to graduate when you're in your K-12, um, you know, uh, situation than it would be to graduate from high school after you have, um, you know, kind of been out of school for a while. And so, again, you need to always place graduation at the top of the learning chain. Uh, However, the vision and the alternatives do exist. And a high school diploma is valuable, but so is an adult ed high school uh, diploma, GED, and the um, school diploma test that they have now. So there are different ways to get out of high school, but you want to make sure you get out as soon as possible, like K-12, and then jump on into mm -hmm. your life and make decisions, you know, to go to college or university or even do to do extend uh, job training, go into a job training. But you have to plan on going to college and seeking a, a job training after you get your high school diploma. And if you do this, then your life is going to have many more options than if you uh, end up in the, uh, you know, jail kind of situation or into the uh, other areas that they have uh, where they have us being unsuccessful as young black men. And I say this, even though, you know, I'm 70, I've been through school, but I just see the, the repetitive aspects of what happens to young brothers uh, when they don't go ahead and get that high school diploma in high school. Larry, I love everything that you're talking about. And listen, I can clearly see the importance behind all of this and i think it's probably safe to assume the answer to this next one but you know what happens when you assume larry so i'm not going to do that to you 
Talk to us about inspiration behind this narrative and why you felt compelled to write it. Because I was a, a student that we were in the, my 12th grade year, we were demonstrating to get Black studies into the curriculum. And even now, we're still struggling as a people uh, to be recognized. And so this challenge continues to challenge us. And so in the book, I suggest you reading after class uh, about Black history, um, about who um, Black men and Black women who have achieved a lot in their lives, um, so that you have your heroes. And you don't have to worry about being discouraged uh, because you have a teacher that says, oh, well, you're not gifted. Because I was told I was not gifted, and yet I got two master's degrees. Uh, so, you know, we have to make sure that we encourage Black youth to continue achieving and continue uh, studying, not just the, the high school curriculum, but also about our magnificent history. And so that's what guided me in my life, and I know learning about our history will guide other young Black boys in their lives. Mm -hmm. as well as black young men. You know, um, there's a, a person who I'll never forget, and his name was Renoko Rashidi. And I met Rashidi while I was writing the book uh, in Sacramento. Uh, he's a great brother. He's written about 30 books. And also, he edited my book. And when he edited my book, uh, he actually read it first and then edited. And uh, I believe that everybody... Uh, should appreciate a brother like uh, Renoko Rashidi, and uh, he was a real brother, and he's, uh, he passed away soon after he finished editing my book uh, in Egypt, uh, leading people on a tour of Egypt. And I just want to say uh, praise to his name and pay homage to uh, Renoko Rashidi uh, for editing and uh, introducing my book letter to my young brothers and their parents. You know, Larry, listen, I, I second what you just said, man, because I think that that is such an important aspect to bring up because I remember being, I mean, listen, it seems like an eternity ago that I was in the classroom here, but I remember it wasn't until high school, I think it was my, my junior year in high school that I was able to take an African-American history class. And of course, at that moment, it was only, it was taught as an elective. Prior to that, though, yeah. The only thing that you would hear yeah. from an educational institution was about slavery, right? And anybody who has done their due diligence and has actually explored black history understands that, listen, man, there is so much more that we have contributed to society outside of just slavery. And I love the fact that you bring that up yeah. because that was something that really birthed a curiosity within me that followed through when I was in college and taking all of these other African-American history courses, it just really sparked a love and a pride for my myself and my background and my heritage that otherwise prior to that moment didn't really, you know, again, it, it wasn't something that was, that was very, that was very well instilled upon me and those around me. So I think that that is a very important part that you bring up. You know, as we switch gears here, Larry, I want to talk about still with inspiration, but listen, when when your title is written the way it is, and I, I don't think it was by accident, it's a letter to my young brothers. So we got that point, given all of the different chapters that you've already spoken about and the importance of, you know, getting through that K through 12 preparation for college and, and beyond. But your second part to it is and their parents. And I think that that's a crucial component. Talk to us about that aspect and some advice that you'd like to give not only to young brothers and sisters listening into this interview right now, but the parents of those children as well. Uh, yes, because again, if you uh, if the parents are not involved, um, then our kids tend to get um, targeted by the system. And so you parents have to kind of stand in with this, with their sons and you know, visit the school, uh, visit the principal, uh, visit uh, the classroom, you know, so that they do have an interest, parents do have an interest in supporting black boys uh, so they can graduate. And you know, I have, been, I have poetry in the book, uh, spoken word, 
um, like, you know, close the gap, don't sit in the back and yap, 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 bridge the gap, bridge the achievement gap. Yeah. Uh, don't act like you don't know how to act when you uh, can close the gap, you know. So there are things to hear that um, it's black boys wouldn't do if their parents was not coming to the school to visit them every now and then. And so it is an investment, but the parents need to put the investment in first in reading this kind of book with their uh, son. The second in the setting goals like graduation and, uh, you know, possible uh, a gifts that upon graduation. Um, but there's a lot of discussion a parent can give. They will give motivation to the black boy to let him know he's going to school to graduate. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to school uh, to shut and drive or cut. And so those are, these are the kind of things we need to do so that our boys be more successful. And because right now, um, according to that uh, UC Harvard study, uh, black boys have the worst chance in the world uh, of graduating and being successful. And uh, so our parents, uh, we need to step forward uh, to support our kids and make sure uh, black boys are encouraged to go on through with it. People, I'm telling you, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, his Facebook site, you got to go and pick up the copies, okay? Letter to My Young Brothers and Their Parents is the title you have to pick up. Larry Ukali Johnson read is the author. You need to thank for bringing it to your table because I'm telling this man is dropping gems and we've barely scratched the surface. <laughs> There's still so much <laughs> left to be discovered. And I know myself, right? I can sit here. I'm at the edge of my seat. And I know you all are as well. I can sit here. I can talk to Larry for hours, man. I just want to continue to go down this road. And I have to keep reminding myself, Benji, this is not about you. So you know where you have to go. Pick up your copies. That's all that's going to be said pertaining to this book. Now, Larry, I want to focus on the future now. Okay, and, and listen, completely up to you. Yeah. You can either talk about another book that you're planning on writing or another one of the, the books that you have in your canon because you have six others that you've written. But talk to our listening audience about yeah. one of your other titles, please. I'll talk about the uh, two, um, w two books that I'm working on. One book is, um, is a, an anthology of African-Americans who have been to countries in Africa. Uh, that's McConan, Arthur McConan uh, Sankofa out of London. I'm working with that brother on that book. And then I'm also going through all of my books and compiling all of the spoken word I've written over the six uh, books that I have on sale at, uh, at my page on Amazon.com Kindle. Uh, and also I'm pulling out a few new book pieces that I've written. And so I'm re writing now uh, a book of poetry. So I have those two things going in the future. And then going back, I still have Journey to the Motherland, my first book of uh, my second book, actually. I was in New York City in, uh, in the um, late 80s, early 80s, I mean. Um, and I wrote this book called The Black Expatriate in Africa, which I later turned into Journey to the Motherland from San Francisco to Benin City. I had the book called Loving Black Women, again. It was to uh, give the sister a lift after being knocked down by hip hop. And I have another book called History to Destiny through Afrocentric Poetry. So um, I have my books on sale at Amazon. You can always go to Larry and Colin Johnson Red's office page at Amazon.com Kindle, and you can get right there. And I'm, you know, just going to keep on, keep on, keeping on until, until we get there because our struggle that has not yet. Uh, End it. We have to continue to struggle to move ourselves and our people up the line. Yeah, man. Listen, people, this is a marathon, okay? There is a lot more work yeah. to do, and we need to prep ourselves for that journey. I love it, man. Yeah, you you know, listen, I, I generally like to to close out my interviews offering a reflection or a spiel. It doesn't even, it's not even right to do that in this instance, because listen, here's the thing. If if this interview hasn't moved you by this point, you're asleep, okay? You need to wake up or you're going to get passed by. <laughs> Nothing more can be said. If you're like me, you're sold. You know what you got to do. Larry already said it, but I'm going to I'm going to reiterate it just to re-impress it. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, check out his Facebook page as well. The book we discussed today was a letter to my young brothers and their parents. But remember, there's six others available at this moment and much more on the horizon. 
This is educational. People, get these books, put them on your shelves. As I mentioned when we first started, these are fantastic resources and wonderful gifts for you to get for someone else to put on theirs. Head on over there today, pick it all up. Larry, this has been a true pleasure, man, an absolute delight. Thank you once again for being a guest on People of Distinction. I felt this was a wonderful interview. This is the best interview I've ever had. Thank you so much.